Well, what I wanted to do today was to give a, a little brief video on this uh, pulse generator. It's an HP 8013B. Uh, it's a dual output uh, generator. It uh, gives you simultaneously positive and negative going pulse trains. Uh, it's got the uh, standard complement of uh, inputs and outputs. It's got a uh, trigger input, a gating input, and a trigger out. You have uh, use these slide switches here to adjust for pulse period, uh, pulse delay, and uh, pulse width. And then you use the, uh, the vernier controls to adjust between the two ranges. So you have this one set here. You use this control to set your pulse delay from one microsecond all the way to 0.1 milliseconds. Uh, the, same, uh, the same concept is used on the amplitude. You have two attenuators here. Depending if you have the internal uh, load enabled, uh, your output range can be from uh, 0.2 volts all the way up to 10 volts. And then you use the, uh, the vernier controls to also adjust between the, the two ranges. Uh, you have uh, offsets here, adjustable by 2.5 volts. Uh, you have a, a switch here, normal or complementary. I believe that's how it is. <laughs> it uh, basically reverses the duty cycle of the pulse train. So if you've got the narrow at the top and you flip that switch over there, then the narrow will appear down at the bottom and the, uh, the wide one will be at the top. So anyway, yeah, and then on the back, let's see here. We've got a couple of uh, plugs here, jacks. we got the, uh, an external a triggering input. We've got uh, you know your AC power, you know the, just the basics. And this here just selects what kind of uh, uh, triggering options that you want. So anyway, let's uh, take a look inside this thing and uh, see how how it's, how it's built. Well, so here we are with the unit open. Uh, this side here, this is the A5 board, which is the pulse generator board. Very, not uh, too many. I don't think I see any integrated circuits. That's all discrete transistor. Yeah. Nice. And on this side, we have the A5 board, which has a few, uh, a few power transistors on there. And, uh... Some voltage regulators is the uh, the voltage regulator slash output board. Now, when I opened this up, I found a repair a history card. It seems that this unit went in twice. Once in uh, September so September 9th of eighty two, and September third of ninety, for the same issue. It was the uh, the A6 board Q3, which is this transistor right there, which is a driver transistor for this amplifier section. So that was interesting. It went back twice for the same thing, plus it was calibrated. So I'm assuming that the last time this thing was calibrated was uh, <laughs> September 3rd of 1990. Yeah, these are kind of cool. You don't see those very often. But yeah, the unit's pretty clean. It uh, doesn't seem to be too bad off. But one of the issues that I have with these units are these slide switches. These are notorious for becoming noisy. So usually if you pick up one of these, the first thing you have to do is to clean these switches with uh, some good control cleaner. <clears throat> Otherwise, you, you can power the unit on and it, uh, it'll act like it's not working. And But as soon as you... Start cleaning these controls with some good cleaner. They'll come back to life, and uh, typically, that's all. It's, it's usually all that's ever wrong with them. Occasionally, they will fail, just like this one did, twice. So hopefully, it's gonna work just fine. But anyway, let's, uh, let's look this thing up and uh, see what she does on the scope. Well, there we go. It is working. Still have a little bit of an issue with uh, this light switch here. It uh, kind of gets a little flaky, but I might have to uh, 
spray it once or twice to get it to make in reliable contact. But yeah, the thing works fine. The only thing I had to do was replace the pilot bulb. So it's right in there, right behind that little metal retainer clip there. Yeah, these things are freaking tiny, man. I mean, look at that how small that is. These are, uh, where are they here? They're uh, uh, 6839 bulbs. These are 28 volts. I was able to get a pack of 10 of them. But yeah, they're a little tricky to get in there, but I gotta have the pilot light on. So I gotta know when the power's on. Gotta make it look good. But so far, I've uh, kind of went through the uh, the ranges on this thing, and it's actually it's really really close to still being in calibration. Uh, it's astonishing that it's held this well for so long, especially after the uh, last time it was calibrated, which was in '90. Pretty uh, pretty good. Anyhow, yeah, I don't uh, this. This thing's kind of a little bit different to operate. You gotta when you when you're running this thing, you gotta make sure that uh, that that your pulse widths are not wider than the pulse period, and vice versa. Otherwise, you get messed up pulses. So if I go to let's say let's move that up one more range, and uh, we turn this down to here so we can get the pulse width we want. Well, if we go too far, we start exceeding the pulse period, and now we get messed up waveforms. So in the manual, it tells you that there's certain ranges that you that, uh, that you got to watch out for. <clears throat> there are certain, actually, zones. And then when you got this switch set for this zone, you can't use this switch here with this vernier control over to this side, because you just simply exceed the pulse duration. So whenever you uh, use these switches, you got to make sure they're they're set in the right ranges, because you can get some really confusing looking pulses coming out of this thing. But uh, it's just one of those things you got to keep in mind since this thing isn't automatic at all. It's uh, some of the newer ones, the programmable ones, the digital ones, <clears throat> will automatically set the limits of your pulse widths and your pulse period. So you can't have a a pulse width. It's wider than the pulse period, and now, like I said, vice versa. Same thing with the pulse delay. And this pulse delay is actually used in conjunction with this pulse doubler. So if you want two pulses, you just switch this over to double, and then set your pulse. Well, this pulse delay is not quite working on this because I don't have the right... Just start to get it there. Okay, there we go. That's how you double the pulse. So you could take this thing from uh, all the way up to 50 megahertz. Quite interesting. Anyway, that's about all I got for now. So I'm going to put this thing together. Uh, I'm going to go through the calibration. I'm just going to just check the calibration and the power supply rails and uh, double check everything before I put the cover back on and call it good. So. But for now, this is it, so I'll uh, catch you guys later. i got uh, more videos coming down the road, so we'll see you all then.